All right then. Um, so yeah, Ellen Ab's finally here. Um, I don't think I, you know, <laughs> we, we usually don't know how to say names. Um, but I guess it's like, I just say Ilyanav or, you know, Ilyanav. Um, I guess if you wanted to say it like in Japanese, like with an R, you'd probably say something like Yirinav. But uh, who knows? I think this game is Korean too, so I'm not entirely sure <laughs> that that's apt. Uh, regardless, here we are. Uh, finally, we get to uh, pull for her. Though I say that, a lot of people have been saying, oh, finally she's available. But I didn't even know who this character was until like they announced that she was like going to be on the banner. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I guess a lot of people have been anticipating her. They, she came out in the story at some point, but you know, who knows? I didn't see that, so I don't know. Uh, so first of all, I am going to forget to go fill up my inventory, so I'll be right back after I do that. All right, we're back. Um, she was saying, uh, yeah, just Ilanav. You know, she looks kind of interesting. Uh, we'll talk about her in a little bit, but we'll do these first ten pulls in case anybody wants to just see. Um, what I get. I haven't gotten anything out of these from the past few days. Um, I actually need more Sonyas because uh, I have a Sonya, but I wanted to boost it a four star with copies of herself. So as many of those as I can get is, is good. Um, what else? Yeah, not really. I don't know. I mean, in terms of like four stars, let's see what we get here. Uh, and apparently we also got a five star ticket today, which is pretty cool. We also got like a thousand uh, stamina, which is uh, that's a lot. Uh, especially now, well, it, it's easier to calculate now because the the hunt event or the hunts are, are down to twenty. Um, it doesn't really amount to a whole lot more. Uh, you get like one more run after ten of them now, I think. Yeah, after like ten runs, you get one extra where you didn't used to. Um, let's see, five star. Yeah. I need five star artifacts. I need Alexa's baskets. Um, Elbrus's are always good. Just any five star artifacts. Except for ones I already have. I need Sigurd Scythe because I need one for, I need one for everybody basically. I need one for Ken, which Ken has my ML Ken, which I just I got from the connection, right? So we can go take a look at him uh, later if we want to. Uh, but ML Ken, so I have ML Ken who, who's using my uh, Sigurd Scythe right now because he kind of basically just needs it. Um, I need Ravi. My Ravi run. I run her on. Oops, let's stop there. I run Ravi on Sigurd Scythe. Um, I know a lot of people don't. They'd rather run something else on her. But I really. The survivability you get from one, your S1s, you know, heal you for a lot more, uh, as well as like when you do an S3, you're doing AoE, which just heals you basically from like low to max. And and sometimes like you can't do the S3 because your HP is kind of low. So if you do the S3 and you don't get the stun off, uh, they'll kill you next turn because your HP was kind of low. But now you can get the, you don't have to like make that trade off. Um, I know a lot of people run around like, um, what's that one artifact? Like, I think it's Crimson Seed. Crimson Seed or that one that just removed, yeah, I think it's Crimson Seed, you, it's not Strax, yeah, Crimson Seed, sorry. Uh, people run around that, uh, some people run around that just for the fact that you can cleanse a debuff and then if she counters, she cleanses another debuff, so she's kind of like self-sufficient in that way. Uh, but I don't really run her into team, I don't really run her into teams that have a lot of um, uh, CC for one. Um, uh, for two, she usually comes with a cleanser or someone who grants immunity anyway, right? So I kind of have that covered, so I don't really need that, and, and having the healing is a lot better. Uh, and and the point I want to make is like, oh, well, you know, why not have some coverage of, like, you know, CC immunity and all that stuff? But the, the major problem is that, like, if they bring CC and, you know, it's like, oh, you know, whatever. You can kind of fix it with the uh, with the Crimson Seed. Chances are they're going to bring so much CC that that Crimson Seed, that one cleanse, isn't going to do anything, right? It's like, that's, that's what I want to point out. It's like, there aren't a lot of people running, like, there's no middle ground. Either someone's running, like, hardly any CC, like, maybe it's like a whole regular bruiser draft, and then somebody runs, um, like, a Cerise in there, and there you go, and that's it. Or an F10A. F10A does have a lot of debuffs, so that's kind of something to be concerned about, but... Like, they'll only run, like, one debuffer in, like, a team of six, and then you can just ban that one out or, you know, pick around whatever else you want to pick around. Uh, or you're facing a team with, like, everyone there has debuffs and stuns and everything. And it, against a team like that, it's useless. And against a team where it's only one debuffer, it's kind of diminishing returns to just, like, have... to lose a whole artifact to just deal with that one, right? Uh, basically, the point being that right now she's on... Uh, I want her on Sigurd eventually, again, once I get another one. But I want... I'm running her on Durandal, just because... It's kind of like a replacement, so it's like she gets her turn sooner, which means that she can S1 sooner, which means that she can heal sooner, 
rather than having to worry about the Sigurd like proccing and then healing her back up and all that kind of stuff. And then the other person I want Sigurd Scythe on is um is actually what's her name? Uh, ML Charlotte, so LQC. Uh, so hopefully we get some of those. I mean, am I gonna get three? Am I gonna get two extras? Who knows? But uh, I kind of doubt it. Let's get in there. Well, there we go. First, that's it. She's right here, I think. Right, first pull. If she is, that'd be hilarious. Oh no, she's not. So, hopefully, like a Sigurd Scythe or something. Nope. So I'm not gonna like play them all out, but we're gonna go one at a time. Uh, funnily enough, I've seen you know, for most of us, I'm sure we we watch YouTube videos, and um, I've seen a lot of people summoning multiples of her, which I think I mean it's nothing. You know, you summon whatever you want to summon, right? Uh, it's up to you. But I'm not entirely sure why her specifically, and I think unless you're like them, where you know you can you can either whale for some of them, and in other cases, uh, like Astronox, you can, um, yeah, multiple accounts, so it's like, you can splurge on one of them, right? Um, so unless you're like at that level, I really don't think it's worth summoning multiples, even if you get one early. Like, if you get one on the first pull, I would just stop, just because there's better stuff probably on the horizon. Especially if you don't have SSB, which she's probably going to come soon. Um, as well as like, like, even if, like, okay, well, let's say you just, like, oh, I have I have enough to pity her. Like, I think you should go into that with as many bookmarks as you can. Um, well, personally, I, I think I would, but I have a triple S uh, SSB. So, it's a little different for me. And the, the thing I'm cautious about it, like, after I said, I just said that and I just sort of thought about it for a second. Uh, I'm kind of cautious about it now just because you don't see SSB in a lot of, uh, a lot of content these days. Like, a lot of... You know, Arena, she's not very strong anymore. She's too easily countered. Uh, there's no uh, RTA. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of places like... You don't get to use her in Arena. Well, it's important to realize... You don't get to use her in Arena a lot because there's like Rowana's everywhere. But basically, if Rowana's not on a team, SSB makes that team free. So that's something to consider if you're like climbing um, regular Arena or something like that. Is that uh, while a lot of people like me kind of like, oh, you know... SSB's kind of fallen off lately. When you look at when you're climbing arena and you look at like the teams there and everything, um, you have to realize that like Rowana's on almost all of them, and that has to tell you something about how dangerous uh, she still is. So, in terms of how strong she is, I, I do think she's still strong, but like she's got so many counters that she's very limited currently. Um, so yeah, that's something that's something to consider is uh, how limited she is, how kind of shackled she is by all the counters out there. Uh, but it's important to realize that like she is where she is because if they didn't exist, then you know you basically just stomp on everyone with her. Um, yeah. So there's Kawana. Uh, I wanted to pull for ML Kawana, but I, I never got her, so that kind of sucks. I forgot what what was she on? Was she on the? Yeah, I think she was on the. <laughs> the LQC banner. I didn't get her. That's kind of sad. No, no, she wasn't. That was old. That was a long time ago. I forgot who was on the LQC banner. Regardless, ML Kawazu looks pretty cool. So I might... Uh, well, I'm probably going to... Well, it really depends, obviously, on, on the five star that's with him. Uh, it's going to suck if it's like someone I really don't care about. Like, if it's Ruel, which a lot of people are saying is Ruel, it's going to be Ruel. Um, I, I'd rather not I'd rather not summon just because I have two Ruels. Um... And yeah, it's just, I, I, like, I, I don't have any use for Ruel these days, um, just because, uh, what's her name? Maid Chloe kind of does what she does, but like, y usually a lot better. Now, in Guild War, usually, Ruel is better because in Guild War, you're, oh, there we go. In Guild War, you're reviving like 50% of your, 30% uh, uh, of your team with one revive. Hey, we got Dignus Orb. Uh, I'm actually kind of happy about getting this art like basically just anything that's not her artifacts i really don't care about her artifact um, unfortunately it's dignus orb which i don't really have anyone to use that um the most ideal candidate would be someone like uh, vivian but i don't my, my, i have vivian but she's not built and i have uh, i don't have what's her name uh the better user of it which is uh, top model Luluka. um yeah she's just broken with that thing come on nope uh, in terms of four stars, I really just there's no four stars I need. Like I already have triple S silk and um, ML silk, so we're just kind of here to to get Illinav and get out. 
<laughs> it looks like I'm not going to have the kind of luck uh, a lot of the YouTubers are having lately. It was actually kind of interesting, just like out of everyone, like usually when you when a new unit comes out, you watch like all the people's videos and like, oh, like here's the whatever. Uh, like uh, some of them get them, get the character early, some of them get them later, but like almost universally, all the ones I'm subscribed to just got her early <laughs> uh, this time, which I thought was kind of fun. Of course, some people kind of negated the fact that they got it early and then just kind of <laughs> uh, went for more copies, but uh, it is what it is. Oh, I can't click. Come on. I don't want to go to pity. Did I not? What four-star artifact do I not have? It didn't let me skip it. Oh, I think... You know what? Oh, yeah. I think it's um, the settings. I forgot to change the settings. Uh, every time... Blue stacks... Or not blue stack. Every time... Epic 7 updates on blue stacks. It like resets my summoning settings and my language settings too and everything. Uh, so I have to go change that at some point. I don't know, well, it doesn't really set my language settings. That takes like a whole patch or like a whole like has to download them all and all that stuff. Um, but the summoning settings it changes so I can't skip four stars. Which is kind of funny. I could go into the settings and change it but... Uh, Oh, th there she is. So that was actually real. Uh, we got her like 50 summons to go, which is pretty good. Um, you're going to stand on the same battlefield as me. Fight like you're ready to die. Or I'll kill you myself. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess it kind of bugs me as a writer, but like I'm not sure that second sentence needs to be a sentence. I think you could just put a comma there or maybe a semicolon. Um, just because that second sentence doesn't really have it's it's a I forgot what it is. It's the opposite of a run on like a like a it's too short a sentence and there's no like you know it's not properly constructed. <laughs> anyway, breaking down the literary um, <laughs> nonsense of a, of a mobile game. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. So she's cool. Uh, we're gonna thanks to the new penguin system, you can just upgrade people like you know instantaneously. You don't have to go grind them out. Uh, you don't have to like the penguin like feeding penguins and, and holding on to penguins is annoying. Uh, but now you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so she's got like a dual sword kind of thing that like stuck together, which is funny because uh, it just reminds me of Dark Souls 2 and like how broken the twin blades were in that game. At least for a lot of the PvE stuff, uh, you just kind of go in there and just grind everything's health down with a, with a twin blade, <laughs> lightning less twin blade. Uh, so we also have a moonlight summons. Let's go do that, and then I have a five star ticket, so we'll do that too. Uh, I might. I mean, I don't like. Like I said, I mean, I don't make showcases very often or anything like that. But I might like I might start like I've been thinking about like starting the channel, uh, getting more videos and, and whatnot made. So that might be something I end up doing. Uh, but we'll talk about Ilinav and, and her skill set as well afterwards. Now uh, let's go back to the summoning thing. Uh, Moonlight summon. Let's see. Get here. Ooh, come on. Five star. Who do I need? I don't actually need anybody from five star. I need Moonlight haste. That'd be nice. Uh, I don't need any four stars. Oh, that's Kawana, but of course we got Sid. Uh, let's go active. Let's go open. Well, we got we ended up with exactly a thousand bookmarks. That's nice. Uh, feels like a good sign. Uh, let's go get rid of some units. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, I have dogs. I can just max three hundred three. Let's see if I can. And I have nothing, apparently. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me just sort some stuff out real quick. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at who we get out of this um, this thing here. I don't actually know who I need. I think Crow would be nice. <laughs> I would have gotten the uh, bomb model Kana. Um, yeah, I guess. That's fine. So let's go take a look here. Well, actually, let's pull her out of the um, box storage. As you can see, my storage is um, quite beefy. Look at all these silver transmit stones. <laughs> uh, let's get her out of there. And let's go take a look here. So let's talk about... Ilinav a little bit. Uh, 
<clears throat> looking at her stats, right? So a lot of you know a lot of us have seen already uh, what her stat line is and all that stuff, and and she looks like a match for Charles instead, you know, only fire instead of um, earth. Uh, so one of the things that I think is kind of interesting about her is um, they kind of preemptively preemptively nerfed her the way Charles might get a nerf someday, uh, and that's this does not chain into this, right? This just becomes this. So she's got about a 50-50 chance of hitting this. Now, one of the things I find kind of interesting about this is that um, she gets defense buff for two turns, which if you're running around out, like, I'm not sure what they had planned for her to do because theoretically she should be run on Elbris. Like, that's kind of the point of running her. Um, if you run her on, like, something else where she doesn't counter and she doesn't turn this into this, um, this, this cooldown makes sense, right? But the fact that, like, you can refresh this by chance is turning this into that. Uh, means that you're going to kind of overlap your defense buffs all the time. So I think maybe taking one turn off the defense buff and then giving her something else instead would have been nice because you have to realize that characters are balanced according to, you know, everything that's on there is balanced the way it is. So the fact that she has two turns of defense buff means that something else could have been boosted up instead where so we, we lost like a, maybe an extra ability or, or some other thing somewhere to make this two turns when this didn't really need to be two turns because like i said she's going to be uh constantly hitting people with the um s1 turning it into s2 um at a 50 percent rate of course um but yeah i'm not sure it's just it's, it's something to consider it's something interesting to me uh that they went with two turns when she's generally supposed to be not only like not only that but you can turn the, reduce this down by two turns uh by one turn from the cooldown so it's three turns and then soul burn it to make it one turn so you can do it next turn again. Um, the fact that you can do that means that this defense buff is like useless at two turns, right? So that's, that's kind of my... something that kind of annoys me there. Uh, but other than that, she's alright, right? So her S3 gives out the critical hit damage uh, buff, which is the first time we've seen it off of someone other than Flan. And I didn't pull for Flan because uh, I knew someone better would have it. Um, and not that she's better than Flan, they, they kind of do two different things, but I prefer to have a bruiser that can give this out rather than have someone like Flan who's just a debuffer and that's all she does, right? Um, but that's just because I, I prefer, like, I don't know. I don't really like debuffing and I don't like this debuff meta that we've been in um, myself. So that's, you know, it's up to you. It's up to your, like, your taste and how you like to play. Um, running a lot of debuffs and stripping and all kinds of other nonsense is not something I really care too much about. Uh, so having the crit damage buff on her instead is, is a lot better for me. Uh, it also boosts herself, of course, you know, get a whole lot more damage out of her uh, health scaling. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, unfortunately, I don't have any molas because uh, I just, like I said, I just pulled. Um, I just got Ken out of the... Uh, Moonlight, uh, whatever. These are his stats if anyone wants to see them. Uh, he's got four speed, and that's from this necklace. And I, this necklace is on someone else. So I kind of want to switch this off, but I don't really know what to switch it off to. Um, of course, I could switch this to, like, uh, flat attack, but I don't actually have any flat attack. And none of the stats I have here are really worth switching it to, so that's kind of that. Uh, so I just left the speed on. Uh, plus, the idea is that, like, I might want to put this on someone else later. And then give him another piece of another necklace or something like that. So that's kind of what that's there. Uh, his defense is his his crit chance is kind of low, uh, and his defense is kind of low too. But basically, I want him to take a lot of damage to get below the fifty. And then once he's at fifty, it's kind of like you know he's got eight thousand HP. So that's kind of you know the idea there. Uh, his attack is kind of low. I wanted him at least four K. Um, but you know with this getting boosted up, hopefully it'll boost him some more. And you know maybe I'll get a hopefully I'll get a better weapon and that'll boost him up uh, with higher attack. And of course, the crit damage you want it to be uh, three, three, three hundred and fifty, uh, but I just couldn't achieve that with the gear I have. So we'll, we'll have to see. Um, yeah. Uh, who was the other one? So I just got LQC as well, and she's taking up a lot of mola. Uh, plus, you know, fourteen. Uh, so she's kind of lacking a little bit. Uh, I like the stats that she has, but I want a little more attack. I mean, four K attack and three hundred crit damage is what I want. Um, the crit chance is fine just because the, the hell cutter or the, yeah, the hell cutter, hell cutter will make up for that a little bit. In most cases, it, it kind of patches up the fact she's missing 20. But anyway, like I said, let's get back to what we're talking about. So we have, so we have no molas, so I can't like really look at any of that stuff. Um, think about any of that stuff for, for now. Uh, but I'm probably going to take my Elbrus off Charles and, and run it on her and see how she does. Uh, just cause like I, like, I think most of us have, have said already, Charles has kind of like fallen off a little bit. 
Um, so this is AoE, you know, just hits, and that's basically all there is to it. Uh, this gives out um, injuries, which I think is all right. I mean, it'd be kind of interesting to try her out with like an injury set, and then have her do 20 plus the injury set is like 30. I think it gives, no, well, 30 in total. I think the injury set gives like 10% or something. I don't have any injury sets, so I don't know, right? Uh, but I think, you know, with one hit, that's already 30% injury, and then maybe, you know, she gets a counter or something, and then it goes 30, you know, another 30, which it only caps at 50. So by then, you've got 50% HP, and that's it, right? So I think that's kind of interesting, but I think you want her on a decent amount of speed as well, just to make sure you get this immunity. Well, you know, she's not awakened, but you get this immunity buff, uh, as well as getting this defense buff up, uh, and then just hoping she does this now. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting to me is, is that. Now, one of the fun things about this is like you can't do this off a dual attack, which Charles can S2 off of an S1 that he got from a dual attack, which is pretty insane. Um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the major problems with her to me anyway is like she just does, she's just going to do mild damage, right? She's going to do about as much damage as like, you know, anyone else. <laughs> um... I don't know. Like we've seen, we've seen you know bruiser type damage before. We've seen things like, uh, well, Alencia, right? Like Alencia's pretty good. Does a lot of damage. But the thing with Alencia is she does a lot of damage most of the time because people have their best gear on her. As you can see here, I don't really have that good gear on her. This is my best Alencia gear, but it's even that's not that good. I mean, I have this blue boot, and nothing has been able to replace this since forever. I mean, for those of you who've been here for a while, you've seen her this, with this boot in videos. Um, but my my personal situation aside. What people don't understand is that like Alencia does good damage, not because it's necessarily Alencia, but because people just drop her be their best gear on Alencia. Um, but a regular, like a regular average built Alencia, is going to do mediocre damage the same way as um, Ilyanav is going to do. It's gonna it's just going to do average damage. You know, it's gonna, it's not gonna like you're not gonna one shot teams. You're not gonna like stomp teams. But like coming Alencia, you know, she can one shot certain teams depending on how well built she is uh, from one S three, but. Uh, the threshold for that is going to be a lot harder for Ilyanav. Um, and basically, you know, so you're going to run her with this, and basically you're running her for the same reason you're running Charles, is to get a lot of these off with her S1, right, from the counters, from the Albert's counters. Um, but like I said, th the problem with that is that she's not going to be anywhere near as strong as Charles is because um, Charles can S1 into the S2, where here you're S1-ing and then just getting an S2 sometimes instead rather than in, 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 in addition to. Uh, so that's kind of one of the things that, that that's kind of annoying about um, Ilinav and one of the things that's going to lo lose her a lot of effectiveness uh, is that injury, I mean no one likes injury right now and having just ha having a single attack, one of the things that, I, that was interesting about Mort and well let's see where's Mort. Um, one of the interesting things about Mort is all his the way his kit all works together. Well, not works together necessarily, but the way his kit kind of allow uh, where is he? Oh, there he is. Allows him to do certain things. So, for one, Mort has a, a self buff here, which gives him attack and speed. So he can basically you want to build him fast, so he can facilitate S uh, S threeing a lot more, right? Uh, so the point being that would I rather take a twenty percent um, a twenty percent single target uh 20 percent single target uh injury or drop that by five percent and then aoe everyone as well as giving him healing about half his health bar back which is pretty crazy especially on a tank like mort now granted i don't have gear for him so you can't see it very well uh usually he like the top end morts i've seen are usually around 1800 hp 18,000 hp and then you know some defense or whatever uh but it's hard to get a lot of hp on him funnily enough which you know it's kind of interesting um but anyway, the point being that, uh, so you can get more speed, you can run with a bunch of health, a bunch of speed, and then get more speed from this, and then injure everyone, um, while healing, and then you can also run him on Albrus, get defense breaks with the, uh, with the, in the inability to be stunned or slept, right? Uh, and then you give everybody crit resistance, and he gets himself increased speed, right? So, you, the thing about him is he can cycle more, rather than, than, um... Ilyanav. One of the other things that I want to point out here is another person who just recently got um, injuries. Oh, does it not? Oh, that's kind of interesting. It doesn't. Uh, it's not included in the in the skill description. You have to look inside the uh, 
Yeah, don't look in the uh, Awakens. I think. Unless I'm, like, losing my mind and, and he never actually got what I'm saying he got. Uh, but I think... Health, health, defense. Penetrates defense. Provoke chance, critical hit chance. Combat readiness. Injuries, there we go. So while he's not like the best at this, it's interesting that he got injury as well because um, that's 10% every time, which admittedly is kind of crap, but he's also a three star, so that's something to consider. Um, but he also can one shot with his S3, has 100% defense break on there, uh, gets an extra turn when he kills someone, uh, gives himself immunity with the tag chain, which is pretty interesting. Um, and S, you know, his S1 has a provoke, and he's got a bunch of other passive buffs as well. But the thing I want to point out here is that you can you can basically use this every turn if you have a if you have enough souls, right? So you can S3 into S3 into, or S2 into S2 into S2, not only keeping up your immunity, right, which is a good thing, uh, dealing constant damage because he's a he's a pretty hybrid he's a pretty good hybrid damage dealer, right, for two, and for three, giving everybody injuries, which if you pair him up with someone like um, Landy. Or someone like Crow, who does like true damage. Now Lani doesn't do true damage. She does um, she penetrates defense by fifty percent, whereas Crow does true damage. Um, pairing him up with someone like Crow or ML Crow, something like that, makes this a lot easier. So while the turns are going on and you're stacking up this um, this immunity, Crow's damage is also ramping up. So that's something to consider. Is is it's it's interesting to try. Now, do I have the gear to pull off a, a decently fast, uh, decently interesting chaos act axe? Not really. Um, so the reason in, that's one of the main reasons injury is where it's at. Uh, all the people who can inflict injuries aren't really good at doing it. Mort's like the best one and no one's using Mort. So that kind of goes to show you how bad injury kind of is, right? Um, especially like how high gear requirements Mort actually has as well. Like you have to have them at least 18k HP, um, if not higher and hundred percent crit chance with as much crit damage as you can get is it's, it's hard to pull off. Um, but one of the things that I was saying with, with Ilinav is the idea of single target versus AoE, right? So you can... The other two that I mentioned have AoE, but she has single target. So maybe building her with single target uh, injury is kind of somewhat viable because, I mean, we all know how irritating a Ruel is, uh, how irritating maybe like a um, an MLCC is or something like that. Imagine just focusing all your, um, all your injury on someone like a Ruel who's got, what, anywhere from 18k to 20 20k hp maybe 21 and you bring that down to half right so you've got what a, a ruel with like um 20 if it's 20k it's 10k you've only got a 10k hp ruel which is insane right off of two turns like let's say any any on av takes two turns to hit her with an s2 um with the injury set and all that stuff and there you go i mean you know you've got the squishiest ruel you've ever seen ever right so that's kind of something to consider is that injury, one of the other problems with injury is that you can't stack it up high enough on most people and on a lot of people who you would like in RTA, like why, like what are you going to waste time stacking injury on an RB, right? He's already got like 9k HP unless he's like a counter RB, but that's a different story. Um, a lot of targets you want to get injury on are already kind of like, they're already kind of weak. So injury isn't really something you want to use because people are building, are kind of building their um, units kind of skewed. So it's either really tanky or really damage dealing. And if they're really damage dealing, you know, injury doesn't do anything to them so one of the cool things about her right is you can just like have her stomp on like people who have low hp and then save her single target injury for someone with high hp and then have that get cut down in effectively maybe you know theoretically two or three turns right so that's something to consider i think is kind of interesting um However, I don't think she's nearly going to be as consistent with it as you might want her to be because for one, like I said, you have to kind of build her fast enough to like S3 so you don't, that's, that's a one turn you're missing that you're not getting the injury. Uh, you have to wait till she cycles around to get the S2 for the injury and then hope that whoever you want the injury to land on is hitting someone and then you get the counter, right? So that's another thing you have to wait. And then you have to wait a 50% to maybe get the S2 on that one person, right? So that's something like, that that's kind of interesting about the way she works is is it's a little off almost, um, but yeah I think the fact that it's twenty percent let's actually take a look at the uh, let's go to hunt real quick let's look at let's look at the injury set 
and like not only that, but like if we're doing this theoretically with an injury set, what you have to consider is that um, where is it? Here it is. You have to like farm this, which no one has any. Uh, let's uh, actually, how do I? How do I even look at it? Well, we can't look at it here. Actually, let's go look at it in the in the what's it called? Uh, the sanctuary. Um, not. I mean, no, who's gonna have injury sets that are worth using? First of all, and I just did that for the thingy. Let alone like like building around a speed set with all the stats you want is already gonna be hard enough. But then you have to factor in that you like trying to build her with a with an injury set. It's it's like it's pretty hardcore. Uh, after attacking, decreases target's max health by up to five percent. Okay, so five percent, not ten percent, like I said, which is kind of interesting, right? So that means that two with this injury set, two S twos is maxing out someone's uh, injury, so they're at fifty percent HP, right? Which is you know permanent. Not only that, it's permanent. Um, so that's something to consider. This set looks kind of interesting. Um, I was thinking you can run like three of this and get 30% 30, 30 but you can't. They don't stack so that kind of sucks. Um, and the speed, this speed set, I don't know what what, which, what they should do about this set but um, it's kind of worthless. Yeah, 25%. I think this needs to be 15% and then 1% per lost, right? Per lost HP percent. Well, if it's if it's one percent per lost, anyway, we're, we're talking about nothing here anyway. Um, but yeah, so injury set would be kind of interesting, right? So um, after two S twos, someone is about it's down to half HP, or you know they've lost twenty five percent off of one S two, and that's not even like factoring in, right? So if she if we have this on and she does an AOE S three, that's everyone's lost five percent. Uh, then she goes and then she S twos, and that someone just lost what? Uh, 25 30 percent and then you know if she gets any counters you know there they are but 20 percent uh 25 well 20 percent from the skill five from this and then five from the fact that you already s3'd uh that's already 30 percent without even like breaking a sweat right so that's something to consider is is she can be probably facilitating the injury set pretty well problem being that you really do want to build her with a speed set um so you know, I'm not sure how they could how they could buff this if they put like 10% more or 10% more, 5% more, and make this 10%. Uh, I think we'd be looking at something pretty pretty strong here. So if this was 10%, she s threes. That's 10% on everyone. Uh, s twos, somebody. That person's getting 30% plus the 10% that she got earlier is already 40%. Like they're already basically like crippled at that point. Um, so that's something that's something that I think is uh, worth considering. However, you know, how many of us are gonna go out of our way to hunt the last the the Kaida set, um, <laughs> right? The Katie set, uh, and then you know, on top of that, have to like pull out a good set for her among the other sets that you're you're busy grinding there, which are kind of useless. Now, like like we said, they're getting a buff, right? They're getting a buff, so you know, hopefully uh, that makes them viable. Uh, but yeah, so Ilinav is more like if you're pulling for Ilinav, you're more like pulling for an investment uh, because you think she might be good at some point. Uh, but I think for now, she really can't shine uh, in the in the way the meta is built. Now, granted, we we are getting a lot of bruisers. Um, we are getting a lot of bruisers in 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 RTA and stuff like that. So maybe this injury is pretty good. Uh, but I think until Injury Set gets the buff it's supposed to get, I think then we're going to see her really explode and she's going to be top tier. Um, but until then, I mean, you know, it's up to you. Especially because, like I said, not only do we have SSB possibly returning at some point, we're going to get another uh, summer unit that may be as strong as she is. Now, granted, last time Euphine came out, she wasn't really that good. Um, so there's that to consider. Uh on top of that, I think I wonder if we're gonna get a dual banner. We might get a dual banner with Euphine and, and SSB. And if that's the case, that's gonna be pretty good because I'm probably gonna summon on that to get another SS uh, another specialty drink. Uh, but other than that, it's really not anything I want from there because, like I said, my SSB is already triple S. Uh, but the other point is, uh, we also have the collab coming theoretically, uh, and who knows what kind of units we'll get there. I mean, the last time we had the the first time we had the collab was um, uh, Dizzy, and we all know how strong Dizzy's been. Uh, since then and, and she's fallen off quite a bit but the only reason she's fallen off is because every every debuffer that's come out lately 
has basically just had like every debuff she has already uh with a strip involved so like you know it's not that big a deal to run like i'd rather like it's like i'd rather run someone who has a strip built in than someone who's gonna have to wait a turn for the stripping and then then debuff everyone um but yeah so that's that um what else i guess that's all i had to say um we'll see what kind of damage she puts out especially like she's gonna she's probably gonna do significantly less damage than um than alencia because she's not a warrior and she's in fact a knight so if we want like a good comparison for how much damage she's probably gonna do it's probably gonna be somewhere around like mort's damage um yeah so that's something to consider is is be be wary i guess um like charles is 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 as strong as he is because of the way game mechanics work around him and you see here i don't have a counter set <laughs> uh, but i don't use him in anything in like pvp or anything like or anything like that so i'm not like too worried about not having that uh but like i said it, it's important to realize that charles is strong because he can he can he's basically getting two turns in one and then he can proc this constantly as well as give everyone an attack buff and himself a defense buff um so yeah that's something that's something to realize is that like you're not like you're not getting a fire charles right so so hopefully no one no one's like falling for that trap and i know some some youtubers are probably kind of trying to circulate that narrative a little bit um but yeah so charles is the way he is because of the way his mechanics work whereas ilinav is not gonna you know deal as much damage as your charles is gonna do um but yeah so that's about that's all i wanted to say uh on that uh Senya again, Senya, the thing with Senya, she's not going to do as much damage as Senya either. Because uh, not only does Senya just have like high attack scaling, uh, she's also got like true damage in the way when, when this inflicts damage to them. When attack caster serves a non critical hit, deals damage to, attack to the proportional to the. deals damage to the attacker proportional to the attacker's. Uh, to the caster's attack, right? So that's kind of that, that that kind of penetrates defense the same way um, like Rengar's penetrates and the same way uh, what's the other one? Uh, Uberius's tooth. So that's kind of what what and and her own artifact I think which I don't actually have. I don't think I pulled that artifact. Yeah, I don't think I got it. I just got her. Um. But yeah, so that's something to consider is the fact that like. She's gonna do a lot of damage because for one she's gonna you know she's gonna be stacking up all kinds of attack and she's gonna have some sort of penetrating ability. Um whereas Ilinav is gonna be kinda of harder to actually just do raw damage. Again, you're kinda of penetrating some by reducing their their max HP, but that's um That really just kind of, you know, depends on, on, on how effective you can make use of that. And really one of the one of the one of the other things that's important to realize about um injuries is a lot of times it really like some of the people who can really capitalize on injury are going to be mainly um what's his name like Crow because he's got that true damage that ramps up so like if if my s3 now does eight thousand damage right well it's beneficial to use injury and then bring someone down like someone who's got you know maybe 15k hp and you injure them down to that seven thousand eight thousand then you just one shot everyone it doesn't matter how much healing they have right that's the other thing is is one of the major things about injury is the fact that like it really hinders healing and there's not a whole lot of healing going on in uh in arena in rta basically um so that's something to consider is is uh is that so you know I think one of the things I think kind of funny I think is kind of funny though is that if if that if that injury set ever uh gets buffed I think um, it's going to be really scary to see SSB running around because not only she's going to have Rengar, which penetrates defense, she's also going to have like a um, she's also going to be running uh, an injury set maybe, and then just like spreading injury like mad, right? So like even if they bring in what's her name, something like uh, uh, what's her name, ah, Rowana to counter with her little like passive healing thing. Uh, you're gonna run into some serious trouble when she starts just like dropping everyone down to 50% HP and then you can't heal past that uh, and then you have someone like well just anybody just like any damage dealer so her job is not gonna be there to do damage you're just gonna make her tanky as hell and spread uh, AOE damage maybe probably you probably just take off Rengar's at that point uh, but I I'd like to see this one day is, is an SSB 
no attack no damage stats whatsoever just you know like 20k hp 15k or 1500 defense um with like a what's that um maybe like a the bloodstone or whatever and then just have her constantly spreading injury and like even if rowana heals it all up let people like uh like crow just like ml crow just kind of come in and s3 everybody once they're all at 50 percent hp and rowana's healing will do nothing against that now the problem is you have to deal with um rowana's cr push which is another uh, another thing to consider but i think that's going to be an interesting day when <laughs> when we start seeing ssbs built like that because that's going to be pretty scary i don't know about you guys that's going to be pretty scary is dealing with like constant just like bombarding you with with injury like it's nobody's business uh, and then having her heal and then having her be basically unkillable um, let's actually go see what you could run her on at that point um, yeah who knows maybe this something like this boost her turn up so she can get s3s and s1s off more maybe just like rosa hargana so someone else takes a turn they dual attack with her so not only are you getting the dual attack the damage uh you're also just getting like the um the injury right so that's pretty that, that'd be kind of interesting to see uh, or maybe there'll be just some sort of injury-related uh, artifact, and then you know it'll break, <laughs> it'll break SSB again somehow. Um, who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, but that, that's something that I'm kind of like interested to see if that ever happens. Which I, to me, like, if, if you were to ask me, the the one person stopping uh, injury set from from becoming too powerful, like for them bo uh, buffing it too much, is probably going to be SSB. Is the idea that like as soon as they buff it, people are going to try to run her on that, and then. We're gonna see people complaining like mad again because even Rowana's not gonna be able to counter that. Um, Crow is not gonna be able to counter that, or ML Crow is not gonna be able to counter that because even if you kill her eventually from like using your S3s, like you, you can't remove that injury. You're probably at already 40 or 50 percent, you know, injury at that point. By the time you get to just like kill her with Crow with ML Crow, uh, who else is supposed to counter her? Actually, I'm not even. I don't even remember. To me, the only counter for her is Rolana. Um, yeah, I've never seen like anyone else do a good job at countering her, which is kind of interesting. Uh, like ML Crowd does all right, and I have to kind of you have to kind of be wary about that. But like, I guess one of the her best counter, one of her better counters right now is still um, Alencia because she just feeds Alencia's S2 without doing much damage to her. Um, and basically, you just S1 into S2, and she's dead regardless, right? Like, as long as you, as long as she's built better than mine, mind you. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the point, and then on top of having a defense buff, right? Uh, but the point being that, like, even against her, it's going to be really strong. Because, like, take Crow or her, right? Crow's S3 scales off his HP, but if his HP is cut in half, like... You're losing so much damage off the top end because of that. And, you know, Alencia is the same way. You're losing a lot of damage. Hopefully it's not coming through. I need to... Let me turn that off real quick. I know that's irritating. Like, I'll watch videos sometimes. People have their Discord going off in the background. Um, it gets, it's like, it makes you think it's yours. But anyway. Um, but yeah, like, even her, it's going to affect quite a lot, right? Because, you know, her, her damage is based off of her health. And if you're reducing her max health, it's like... You're losing half your damage as well, right? So that's something to consider. So I think, yeah, I think the biggest uh, obstacle in the way of like um, boosting injury set is going to be SSB because she's going to spread that like mad. Like <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, but anyway, I'm sort of rambling at this point and uh, kind of talking about injury and in, as a, a, a in general. But it'd be really interesting to see like a like um just an injury based team. But the problem being that you can't really make an injury based team because. You have to kind of reduce their HP, and then you have to have someone to come in and then just kill them while they're at half HP, which not everyone is adept at doing that. Like, I'm not sure Ilyanav, whether they have full HP or not, like, I'm not sure Ilyanav is going to be doing enough damage to be able to kill them uh, anyway, because they might just be able to heal up to half and still... You need someone who can bring them down fast enough, and I don't think Ilyanav is going to be the one to do that. I guess it's like a last thing. I've just been sitting here um, with her level 5 when I can actually just boost her up. Uh, let's... Uh... Experienced penguins. This is supposed to be a level three penguin. It's actually. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I was kind of annoyed about this uh, update. Now, in general, it's really good. Uh, I like the way the penguins work now a lot, a lot better. Um, but one of the things that's kind of annoying is the fact that uh, 
we can't transmit these. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I tried looking, but I don't think you can transmit these penguins into like any. Uh, maybe this ones. I don't have any of these. I don't know how you would get these, but you can't. As far as I can see, you can't transmit them into silver transmit stones anymore, which is all I used penguins for before. Like, you use the two star penguins. Um, the two star and below, I kind of save them sometimes to like feed to feed them into units. Um, but three star and above, I just kind of uh, use them all for silver transmit stones. I mean, as you saw in my barracks, I kind of have uh, way too many uh, units that have silver transmit stones now, but um, I think that's besides the point, is the, just like, uh, at least for me, like for, for me, right, it's not that big a deal, but for newer players, it's like, that was one of the only ways to get silver transmit stones, was like, hunting down penguins and doing whatever, right? I don't, like I said, maybe I'm just kind of dumb and I can't figure out how to like, transmit these new ones, uh, or how to even get those like, level 3 penguins, all, I do, all I've been doing is just grinding um, stories, I don't know. Uh, maybe they still give them out like uh, like regular three star penguins they used to. It certainly makes it a little easier to give out uh, XP in, once they've um, once they've uh, what's it called? All right, so let's see what's this. I don't have any of these. I guess we can go take five of those. I have like a bunch of a bunch of those box things. Let's kind of come in here real quick and. Uh, Oh, actually, I don't have that many. I thought I had way more. Should I take five out of here? Nah, we'll take five. It's fine. One. Two. And three. Four. And five, right? Theoretically? Yeah, okay. So let's uh let's just awaken her real quick. And then I'm gonna five star her and then we'll uh we'll get out of here. Cause I mean like like you know, I sp just spent like the past like hour or something, forty minutes talking about like the good and the bad of her. Um I think regardless I'd like to five star her, I'd like to use her a little bit and just kinda see where she she how she plays. Um but you know, like I said, just just be be wary about how you know strong she may or may not be. As you can see there, my little Raz is peeking out, uh, letting you know, snitching on me, letting you know that he's not actually six starred yet. Um, I just can't be asked to make Raz. I don't know why. It's not that he's bad or anything. It's just that like he kind of does a lot of what Alencia does, and a lot of what other units do. Like you have to realize that your box is kind of like unique to you. So if you like. Granted, Alencia doesn't give our uh, Lilius. Uh, did I say Alencia? I meant Lilius. Lilius doesn't give out defense buff um, the way he does. Doesn't give out immunity. She doesn't. He doesn't do like. She doesn't do like that um, single target stuff very well, where he can like soul burn his S one and then hit someone. Um, soul burn his S one and then dual attack with someone and then you know do that over and over again or or just like you know have that controlled S one. But I think anyway, I'm kind of going to start rambling again. Uh, but I think, you know, like, take this defense, increased defense. Like, I mean, Alencia, I run Alencia in a lot of comps anyway, so she already gives me that defense buff. Or I run Krau, so I already have two sources of defense buff, and having a third one isn't too useful to me. Um, and, you know, the fact that he heals himself is fine, but, like, I'd rather have the cleanse that Lilius has. And the fact that she has two turns of, of dual attack is all right with me. Like, I know, for those of you who watch Shuffles, I know Shuffles complains, like, all the time like like if i challenge you like go into one of his streams and ask him about a Alen uh, lilius and he'll just tell you oh i run raz because i can't you know i can't i can't i don't like the fact that she has a random team attack um and i find that hilarious because it's like just constantly like it's the only thing that he that it's, it's like the the major sticking point it's like everything else about alencia is probably or lilius is probably uh, good and he's like oh yeah you know it's a good unit but the fact that it's like a random dual attack on the S1, it's just like, he will not, like, it's just hilarious, I don't know. It's just, he can never mention Lilius without mentioning the fact that her S1 is, is random in the same breath. Like, he just constantly complains about it, and I find that hilarious. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I mean, like, I, I just find Lilius a lot more useful, because even if she does dual attack with, like, the wrong, you know, with the wrong person, it doesn't really matter, because it's an S1. I mean, you know, sure, he has a cleanse, uh, a dispel or whatever, but, like... It's only 75% chance that it even does anything. So I'd rather have a dual attack that's going to happen all the time rather than 
this that doesn't do anything. And then I'd rather have the lockdown. Like, this, you can dual attack with this and maybe kill someone. Uh, as well as, like, get a defense break on it, so that's pretty good. But I'd rather have the lockdown and the shield that the S2 gives you. 100% ignore effect resistance S2, by the way, which, you know, two turns of lockdown on someone is no joke. Um, and then I'd rather have the cleanse and a defense buff. So, I don't know. It's just, that's just my, my the way I take it. Like, the fact that, like, the dual attack has a chance to miss the unit you want is not something I really care too much about because it's just free. So either you get that person or you don't. Like, if you're running around with, like, um, RB, like, you either get RB to dual attack with you or you don't. Like, there's not... It doesn't really matter to me. I don't know. But maybe that's just me. I, I just... There's nothing wrong with the way he thinks. It's just that, to me, it's hilarious that, like, he, he'll die before he'll ever, like, admit that, like, the dual attack, there's nothing wrong with the, the fact that she randomly teams up. Um, but yeah, I just find that hilarious. Like, um, but yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I guess that's it for today. I'm just gonna... I'm actually not gonna boost her all the way to, to 60. I just wanted to get her to 50 and then take her into the side story and then just grind that out and hopefully get her up to up to speed there. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, you guys get her soon, uh, like all the uh, YouTubers are these days. 15%, yep, took that one. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see where she goes from there. Um, do I think she'll get buffs? Probably not. Uh, she, she's she's strong at, at doing kind of what she wants to do. It's just that what she wants to do isn't really viable right now. Um, and I think people are going to pull for her regardless. Like, ML Calric is a different story, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be it for today. Uh, I might have some videos tomorrow um, about who knows what. I'll have to think about it. Um, I do have some video ideas. I just don't know which ones I want to do when I want to do them. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you'll see a lot more from me um, going forward. But uh, I think I've, I feel like I've said that before. Hopefully I haven't. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so that, that's it for today.